Welcome back, everybody, to Comic Shop Talk on the Late Night Collectors community. I'm your host, Nico, and joined with me today, as always, is my co-host, Chris. How you doing, man? Hey, not too bad. How are you? You know, not bad. You know, surviving the polar vortex that just hit our city, <laughs> Chris. I mean, uh, last night was rough. Uh, you know, a couple hours of snow. It was, uh, I didn't know if I was going to survive or not, but here we are, man. We made it through. <laughs> I just had to pick up my comics a day later because I couldn't make it out to the store yesterday. I know. Well, listen, during that time that you normally would pick it up, yeah, it was a little rough out there. It was a little dicey, right? I hope you weren't yeah. biking through the snow there, Chris, to get home. I did bike through it. It was okay. I made it. <laughs> you're hardcore, man. You're, you're... <laughs> well, it was clear in the morning, so I rode the bike to work. And I go, oh, what am I going to do? Can't leave it here. I ride it home. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you survived, Chris, <laughs> and you're able to pick up your comics here today. And uh, we're, we're got to get, we've gotten together to talk about them once again, guys. So, Welcome to Comic Shop Talk. If it's your first time checking out the channel, make sure you hit that like button, that thumbs up button, everybody. And uh, subscribe if you like what you saw here today. Hit us up in the comments. You know, let's keep the conversation going. And thank you for tuning in if you're a return viewer. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about the new comics that came out for the week of January 25th, 2023. And uh, spoiler warning, be forewarned, we are going to talk about some of the things that happen in these books here today. We are going to be showing off some of the art in these books here today that may spoil stuff for you uh, but you know you could always read your books and come back if you're afraid to get spoiled about something or you know eventually i try to put up the show notes for every episode you can always go check those to help navigate yourself through the episode or you know just roll the dice who knows maybe maybe sometimes you hear about things that you may not necessarily have thought of picking up and it's good sometimes to be spoiled by some of these things because then you'll be interested in it sometimes when i hear about something going on i'm like oh i better check that out that sounds really good right so yeah there you go but it's just so there's no whining. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Chris, that all being said. All right. Well, let's talk comics. Talk Cheers. Comics. Cheers. Yeah. All right. Good, good week this week in the sense that well, there's a lot of books actually me and Chris are going to be talking about separately here. This is one of those weeks where there's a lot of stuff we haven't read that both uh, you and me usually read. So those are always these uh, weird weeks that happen like this. So there's a few, though, that we both read. So first up, we got Sins of Sinister number one. This, of course, is the, is the, yeah, yeah, I got it here too. Nice. <laughs> it's uh, Art Germ, uh, White Queen uh, cover here of Mifrost. That's a pretty awesome fucking cover. But uh, this is the, this is the uh, basic cover here that they came out with for this event. And uh, yeah, this is a big, uh, long time coming event, I guess. It's been brewing for a while within the X books. Chris, what did you think of this? Well, first off, with this cover, I thought the cover is pretty sweet, too. And I think it confirmed uh, confirmed some things that the LCS there, where I get my comics, they seem to know which covers are mine nowadays <laughs> by, the, by the content. <laughs> All the cheesecakey covers end up in your pull box. You've got a flair for them. <laughs> but anyway, the story itself here, uh, I thought it was pretty good. You know, it's fun seeing, you know, the kind of all the twists with the uh, sinister there. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm concerned about in this whole kind of sinister event is everything's going to be walked back at the end. You know what I mean? Like, especially with such a big time coming, you know, a long time coming. And all the issues that kind of preceded this are all going to become worthless because I imagine they're just going to reset the clock oh, to yeah. maybe some before, before time. And uh, that's the only concern. But the story itself, you know, it's, I think it's a fun story. You know, everybody seems to be a sinister here at the end and, you know, kind of moving through the years. So I'm, I'm down for it. Yeah. So um, some things aren't 100% clear so far, but I guess you got to continue reading for some of these things to get fleshed out. But the thing I guess we didn't realize last issue, me and Chris had, had, had me and Chris scratching our heads of kind of like how it was revealed that Professor X was a sinister by the end of that thing. I guess during that issue, during the resurrection protocol, I guess Sinister got yeah, he, he kind of fit himself in there somehow. Yeah, because you see in all of them, I guess. Yeah, because you see this page here. So I get well, I mean, Sinister, for anybody that doesn't know about Mr. Sinister, like he's like a geneticist kind of mutant. Like he fucks around with like genes and stuff like that, and like he can make clones and do all this kind of shit like that, right? So so like th that's kind of like his power, I guess, of sorts, right? Like so, like he, I mean, he kind of fucks around with like mutants in in that sense. So, and that's kind of like whenever he was a villain in the books in the past, that was kind of like what was behind it a lot of the time, right? So like, 
I guess he got a hold of the resurrection protocol type shit. And then he made a bunch of clones of himself. And then in this book, we're now seeing, like Chris said, like, you know, they jumped a year ahead and we're kind of seeing this current timeline, um, basically how it plays out essentially. And then I guess it's going to spiral out into different various timelines, which are going to be the mini series that the three mini series that they got that's coming out of this. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I, I mean, I never had once considered the fact that like it's going to actually um, anything's going to stick as a result of this. I think this is just a fun event with a fun character who I think they've been doing a really good job with during the the whole Hickman kind of era of uh, of these books, uh, you know, throughout Hellions going into um, Immortal X-Men. Uh, Sinister has been one of the better characters, I think. Right. So I think uh, this was a good person to base or base around this like event right and this kind of issue was kind of cool because there was a little bit much of it but there was a lot of one page kind of spreads of them to him describing ways, yeah, kinda... ways he was gonna fuck everybody over like in well, i guess it's ways he has fucked everybody right. over because it's all stuff that's happened right so like he takes out thanos he takes out dr doom like these are big like moves that he's making and he's describing to you throughout the book how he kind of uh did all these things so you get like there gotta be like 10 pages that are like this like throughout the book where it's kind of like him so like even his approach to taking everybody out and inserting all these different like um sinisters and stuff in, in interesting situations and like even jay jonah was a sinister and they kind of roped in ben urek towards the towards the uh, end there and that was really interesting and yeah so i i, I mean ben urek wasn't a sinister but like they used it to, to suss him out essentially because you didn't know. Yeah. So I, yeah, man, I like this. I like this. It was a good start. Um, you know, as you, as we talked about, we're not, we're not picking up all of the mini series, but you know, if depending how, how that, um, uh, immortal X-Men is, um, uh, which Gillen, uh, Karen Gillen, the writer of this is also writing, which is basically what immortal is going to spin into, I guess. But depending on that is, I might, I might just check the other ones out online because this is a good start. I think this is a strong start. I like that it's not going to last very long. It's going to be in the next couple of months. And, you know, it's happening only between a couple of different X titles. Like, they're changing temporarily just because of this event. But that's not a, you know, it's not a big game changer, I think, this one. Like you said, I think it's just going to be more fun, hopefully, than anything. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it, man. Art was good. Yeah, he's a good character. I, I liked it. And uh, it's interesting to see all of them as Sinisters and stuff like that. Now, so does he, Are they're all still individual, like their own like, it's not like he's, like, hive-minding them, though, right? Like It doesn't seem like that, because at the end, there seems to be a bit of controversy between them. Right. It's like, you know, he seems to be, like, the, the king of them all, I guess, but but the, the other ones of the Quiet Council seem to want a bit more juice or a bit more power on their own, too. And then by the end of this, he got, like, locked out of his lab or something like that? Like, something happened at the end where, like, what, some I, I can't remember. Something about, like, he, he got, like, screwed over towards the end of this issue, it seemed like, somehow? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's his moral, or moral lab seems to be destroyed or something. Yeah, he said something. Someone has stolen my lab. Someone has stolen my Moira's. I'm trapped. That's what he says, like, on yeah. this issue. So that's pretty crazy, like, whatever's going on there. So... Um, I'm sure that we're going to see, um, uh, destiny and mystique pop up somewhere because I mean, they already yeah, kinda... they're still out there. They're, they're aware of what's going on and storm is still out there. Yeah. She's, uh, I guess she's on her own. Yeah. Like she hasn't been corrupted. It seems pretty much everybody else has. Yeah. The Avengers are gone. Uh, Thor is like, I know, just hanging out in Asgard, you know, depressed from what they say. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, a lot of big things happening in there, so it's it is fun to read. Good start, yeah, good solid start. What'd you give this one? I'll give it a three point seven five. I'll give it a four. I liked it. I yeah. like I said, I just have a feeling, you know, they're trying to make it feel like it's a, a canon story, and everything's just going to get freaking blown away at the end. I'd be interested to see where Sinister lands at the end of this, though, right? Yeah, like and and also how they're going to dial it back, essentially. Yeah, are they going to bring it back to like maybe with that the last Immortal X Men before he does before he kills Hope and all them and well, you know, well, sit back and go oh well man. well that's I'll the, wait for another time to plan is this whole event spiraling out of that one timeline that we already basically seen get erased in Immortal X Men and that's why he dropped in because it shows the scene of him dropping into the into the ground in this but then he gets out so i don't know well they released him because he stayed he stayed in the pit for about five years i think it says that in this that's right yeah 
back up because then uh, the whole thing gets bombed. Like Rakoa gets. Uh, yeah, like basically, I think the last once four, he kills those five, right, and then he gets and everything is kind of coming out of there. Right, 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 right. So, um, yeah. So I think that. So I guess, like, if anything, if I had to guess, then we're gonna Moira timeline it back because she has the. Uh, she has that ability where, uh, or no, who who is it when they die? Destiny. Oh, she only has one more death though. Yeah, because there's that whole, th or no, Moira has that ability, I think, that she can create yeah. all the timelines. Destiny was the one that kept killing her in the Hickman stuff. That's right. So I, I don't, um, I guess maybe that might be the way that we end up getting back to a, a, a timeline prior to all this rolling out. I guess we'll see, right? Yeah. I mean, I, there's going to be another like bookend issue. I think that's in the preview in the solicitations that we just looked over last week. Yeah. Called Dominion, which is kind of like the Omega issue to this whole event after the mini series. Right. Yeah. So I think so that'll be like, this is the start. And the other one I think is going to be the one to wrap it up a couple months away from now. So that, yeah, sure, sure. Hopefully it's good. I mean, I, I liked, uh, it's been a while, I think since we've had one of those crossover X-Men events. Um, I guess the last one was during the Hickman time, like X of swords or like even the first, um, the first um what was it those uh balls like the the, the hellfire gala yeah. thing, right so but like i said the thing that's getting me this is all just gonna be a what if story yeah pretty much at the end of it pretty much yeah all right next up we got human target 11 the penultimate issue uh of this story here yeah i got the cover here that we're showing off yeah i've just been reading this online but you know like i said i picked up a few issues here and there and it sort of hooked me in, but uh, maybe not enough to buy it. But once again, it's another great story. You know, it's, it's really pulling you in there if we can give you some twists and turns. I think he's on his last day alive. Yeah. And, you know, you think he'd be more stressed about it. He seems to be pretty relaxed. And it kind of just goes, doesn't sort of reveal everything that happened and all of, what's your name, Dubs, kind of yeah. planning and how things, I guess, turned away because she seems upset that he's not mad about it at the end of this. I, I had two trains of thought on this issue because like at first I was like, okay, they use this issue to basically, like you said, like his second last day alive, he, he spends it with her. He's, he has fallen in love with her along the course of this whole mystery of him trying to find this out. And, you know, I actually, I, I, I'll talk about it probably in the next the issue, the, the last issue wrap up. I won't mention necessarily what was revealed in this issue, but it's a lot of things that I think we had guessed already previous to this. And even a couple of things leading up to this issue that were revealed already, they just kind of revealed, like they basically just went over everything and how yeah. everything was kind of connected to one another. And at first I was just like, oh, I thought there was going to be some crazy, bigger, crazy swerve. And then I thought I was disappointed for a second because, like you said, this was like a more uh, laid back kind of issue in terms of the storytelling. And then I was like, you know what, though? This was excellently paced, this series. I'm like, we're on oh, the second yeah. last issue just because they're going over all this and explaining how everything's connected and, 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 and it worked out beautifully. Like, I'm like, yeah, you know what? This was really well done. Like I was like, I've loved this series the whole way through. I just, we've seen it so many times where they try to pull some crazy fucking swerve on us that I was almost half expecting it. And when they kind of delivered the whole explanation to us in this, I was like, yeah, that all tracks. That makes sense. I'm like, and then I, and by the end of it, I was actually really satisfied. I was like, Oh, you know what? One issue to go the way they ended it. You know, um, it, you know, he pulls out a gun on her for whatever reason, uh, you know, but I'm sure you could guess. And, uh, and, you know, we, 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 uh, have this kind of panel here towards the end of her saying she loves him and he's got a gun to her head and kind of, he's like, well, where do we go from here? Kind of right. Like it's just, and so it kind of left on a pretty interesting note and, and, uh, you know, I, I'm interested to see what happens next issue, man. I, I just, I think. For a 12 issue series, knowing that that's how long the length of this was going to be, it was expertly paced out. I think uh, it kept you guessing. Uh, this is the right issue to basically reveal everything at this point in time out of the 12 issues. And then next issue, just use it as the wrap up to whatever big conclusion you want to kind of, yeah. uh, you know, do to this. Whether or not he survives, I guess we'll find out. They could easily just kill this character off, though, at the end of the next issue because he's not a big character, right? So, like, yeah, I, like it, anything's up, 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 in, like anything, anything can happen here. Plus, it's DC Black Label, so this isn't in continuity. So, yeah, anything, yeah that's what I mean. I think the story is going to that, – that's the beautiful part about it, I think, is like we – you know, he can easily just have this character die at the end of next issue and, and tell his story, and, and you know, no one's no, no one's going to be bothered by it in that sense, right? So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. I, I, I really enjoyed this series, and I think this is another great issue. 
Um, so I'm, I'll be sad to see it go, but it's one of those things where like, yeah, it can't last forever though, too. Like, it's, oh, 12, 12 issues is more than enough that this kind of story, right? Yeah, because it's a short series. Well, it's just because it's, you know, there's an end in sight. It makes it a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, like when that hardcover collection comes out, I'm going to double dip and buy that. I'll have it on the shelf. And, and, uh, yeah, that's, I think it's just going to sit, it's going to probably read even better in all in one sitting once it's actually collected. Oh, for sure. Think, right. So, so what'd you give this one? No, I give it a four. I really liked it. Dave, four. Yeah. Good issue. All right. Uh, next up, I got Justice Society of America number two. I read this one online. Um, not too much to add. I um, I have I've dropped it after the first issue, at least buying the physical releases of these. You know, this is continuing Jeff Johns' kind of storyline where he's basically connecting everything that interests him within the DC universe from one project to the next, I guess. And uh, and I had looked this up after talking about the first issue because I was a little confused as to like what version of um of Huntress this was essentially because and it's I did find out I guess back in like I don't know if it's the Golden Age or Silver Age like old DC to like comics there was this version of Huntress which was Helena Wayne which I don't really know too much about because I'm just used to the, the Huntress that I was introduced to in the 90s so I guess this is kind of it does track I was really confused as to which version of this character this was at the start of this series but anyways they they had showed us a future uh JSA that had just started back up that she was part of and she basically got she traveled back to the past to prevent uh, like something from happening in her future and she's now met up with the old school JSA which a lot of people may be more familiar with not this new future one that they kind of depicted in the first issue which is kind of John's just jumping ahead in the timeline of the DCU and just trying to you know create some stuff for himself here for this story um but now she's met up with the old jsa here she goes back to get dr fate to help out dr fate tries to interact with her in the sense like try to read her mind or see where she came from like her timeline because they're trying to get info and she want to make sure she is who she says she is but when he kind of tries to do that he gets zapped into some sort of other time and place too i guess like a year ahead of like where they currently are in his time and uh, then you get introduced to, uh, you know, the artist changes up. There's a couple different artists on this issue, but like the, because they're bouncing around in different timelines of the DCU, there was some fun kind of characters that they got to show up and be in the issue and different art styles throughout. And Solomon Grundy is here, Mr. Miracle. You got like, uh, I forgot who this other character is here. Uh, it's like Clarion the Witch Boy, but this is like a female version of it, of him. I'm, I'm not familiar with. I don't know if that's new or not, but. But yeah, so uh, it's just it was just fun time travel type DC stuff. And again, I'm not as up on all of my DC history or all these characters. So at times for me, it's a little bit hard to grasp some of the stuff that's going on. But it's, it has it had good art and it was still fun. And I might still continue reading it uh, digitally uh, at the very least. Um, because I, I am curious as to where he's going with all this because I like Jeff Johns and he seems to have connected a bunch of different series that he's been doing lately as it's like some big treatise on the DC universe and you know, whether or not it's going to pay off in the end, we'll see, but this was really cool where she ever, whatever timeline she ended up at the end of this issue, you got detective chimp, Dr. Fate and dead man sitting there. So, you know, I'm a fan of these JLA dark characters. So if that's, if that's kind of what they start doing with these type of characters moving forward, I'll probably stick with it. So, um, you know, even if it's like a fun kind of romp adventure through time, through the DC universe, that, that sounds fun to me. So I'm going to stick with it. I give it a 3.5 though it, out of five. It was, it was decent, but I, I kind of, again, I need, it's, it, it's hard. I'm having a trouble kind of, getting super invested in this story so far because I'm not a hundred percent clear on everybody and like what's going on exactly. Right. But it's, it's been decent. Uh, next up, I got once upon a time at the end of the world three. Uh, once again, this is the Jason Aaron um, creator own series being published by boom that I've been reading digitally. And yeah, this has been fun too. Again, this is about two kids that are basically, you know, surviving out in some sort of like post-apocalyptic wasteland and in this issue, you know, after they got together at the end of the first issue and finally the girl was warming up to the uh, to the guy here, um, 
uh, Maceo is his name uh, by the end of last issue. In this one, you kind of see as they continue to progress through this world, like the idea is the girl is teaching him how to survive and he's teaching her how to live because like there's little things that she hasn't actually been accustomed to at all as a kid through her life because of the, the because of like where she was brought up and how she was brought up and living in these times. And apparently there's like, at the end of last issue, you find out there is this, like this cult survivalist type group that, sh that were basically the ones that were raising her and taking care of her. And this is why she's so good at kind of like surviving out in this world, but it seems like they're pretty hardcore. And again, at, by the end of this issue, like they're, you can see that they're trailing these two kids. Like they're finding like clues of where her whereabouts are and they're trying to get her back. Uh, but like, there's a scene where she like laughs while watching cartoons with this kid. And she's like, Oh, what was that? Like, he's like, you're laughing. Like, it's just like, so she's like, just so cold. And like, you know what I mean? Like, and like not uh, in touch with herself, it seems like her has been able to enjoy her life. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice kind of parallel of like him trying to teach her how to be normal, even though they're in a less than normal fucking situation. Right. And then by the end of this issue, what they've been teasing from previous issues is there's like every issue, there's like a couple of pages dedicated to like, uh, yeah, this is like the scavengers. They're trying to show you like the shit that they take from dead bodies. Like they kind of steal everything off the body and like they steal like the, the skin off a dog to make into like, you know, like a fur and stuff like that. So they're just trying to show you how to, how they're surviving in this kind of stuff, the world, right. That they're living in. Um, if you're like in the post apocalyptic shit or like, walking dead or any of that stuff i definitely would suggest checking this out but this one has a little bit more heart and actually characters that you seem to care about and and some of those other post-apocalyptic type things that's kind of hard to come by sometimes right so um yeah these are these are the scavengers finding them and this is a future kind of every issue they've given you a couple pages out of this future kind of storyline with these same characters so you find out in this one that this is the boy that we're following in the main story right now in the future and i don't know whatever the fuck happened to him He's now like some crazy, like he's always had like inventions, like he's like data or something from the Goonies. It seems like he's always had like these little gadgets and stuff that he's been using in the, in the issues. But he, um, in this, like he's now half man, half like cyborg in the future. So I don't know what the hell happens to him during this main story uh, towards the end, like, wh like where, he, how he ends up in this spot. But that's why it's cool. They, they've been teasing us with that future kind of sequence every, every issue so far. And you, you kind of only get a little tease of it every issue. So yeah. It's good, man. It's really, I'm really liking it. It's a slow build, but I, I've been really enjoying the characters and the art's been decent. I give it a three point seven five out of five. Oops. All right, Catwoman fifty one, Chris. Oop, wrong one. Catwoman. Oop, wrong one. Wrong Catwoman. Hold up. <laughs> there you go. Yep, that, that's the one I got there. Catwoman fifty one. So basically, Catwoman's in jail now, and uh, let's see, what did I write here about? Yeah, it's a decent story of uh, Selena Kyle adjusting to her situation in jail. She's sort of kind of prepared for it. Uh, she's been in jail there before, and she kind of stashed away some things to make life a bit easier. And, uh, you know, she's trying to win over, or kind of, you know, I guess, get her, uh, get the pecking order in line there where she's at the top, so... That's a decent story. It's fun. Not much else going on, but it was a good read, and I liked it. I'd give it, you know, a three point seven five. Uh, you know, I'm still liking. I'm still digging this whole series itself. You know, it's not kind of very superhero-y, let's say, but uh, it's still interesting. You know, it's kind of like the Orange Is the New Black, or a bit of like Catwoman and Oz, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of got that from looking at the art in this issue. So yeah, that's cool. I think that's uh. I don't feel like we've that's something that's been overused, at least that I've seen for Catwoman. So that's kind of interesting in that sense. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then you got Punchline, the Gotham game number four. That's what, four of six? Oof. See the cover. This is, uh, I think this is a variant cover here. Yeah. Nice. That's not too bad. Like I say, I kind of picked up this Punchline stuff just to see what Punchline's all about. And it's a decent series, but it's very forgettable. You know, I, after reading, I forgot everything that happened in there. And basically, I think Punchline, this is still after that kind of crossed over with Catwoman there. So the the docks or Alley Town or wherever where she was you know, building all the drugs seemed to get leveled to the ground. And all the other, you know, you can see there all the other uh, crime bosses are trying to step in and 
you know, kind of take their piece of the pie. Mm-hmm. And I guess punchline, her plan is to just blow up the whole city or something like that. That's that's a decent read. I'm still I still am kind of got punchline kind of pinned down as to what kind of character, whether I like her or not. But uh, you know, I'll finish out the series. You know, it's still some decent covers. These great art in there, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. And I just don't like that whatever that gang she runs with too, the the Royal Flush gang. Mm-hmm. It's just seems kind of silly to me too. And usually they're kind of joke characters, right? Like they're kind of yeah. like villains that show up just to get beat up on. And you know, they've I've seen Royal Flush Gang a lot through DC comics, and sometimes they kind of depending on the writer, they've been written as to be a semi threat. Other times are like, look at these bozos, you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I think this whole series is just missing some star power. You know, I don't know if Punchline's strong enough yet to uh, to hold it, hold a whatever, even a mini series on her own, right? And then you know, the characters that she's fighting is just still a bunch of B level characters. You know, it's not like she's up against somebody you know, freaking super strong or something like that. You know, it's not like Punchline versus Dark Side or something. Right. I mean, they're, they're pushing her though still. And I mean, I, I, I do like her look. Like, I think that they, when they designed her, um, it, like, I do like the look of her. Like I know everybody, like it was just a easy to say, Oh, look at this Harley Quinn rip off when she first came off. Yeah. You know, and I guess in a way, since they're kind of trying to push Harley as more of a hero in that sense, or an anti-hero these days, in the sense like you were supposed to be liking this character, I guess they needed her to kind of take her spot in a way, right? So, like, I mean, whether or not they're selling us on it, like you said, maybe, well, I guess it's... Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think they're selling us on Like, I don't know if they want to get her to be, like, freaking ultra-violent or something, or they don't want to do that either, just because, you know, it's still, you know, the Batman world is still PG-13. Or you know, if they did something like that with her, you know, maybe or maybe they did, and I just never mi- I missed it or something. You know, right. that might be uh, you know push me in a different direction. You know, with the way I feel about it. Right. But like I say, I think this just needs some more star power. She doesn't have enough star power to kind of hold a hold a series on her own. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I give it like a three point five. Three point five. Okay. It's still good. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got the last Ronin, the Lost Years, number one. This is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, so I read the, I, I kinda, I didn't pick up cause I normally don't pick up a lot of Ninja Turtle comics because I buy like the hardcovers of the main series that when they get collected and come out, um, at least now I do, I kind of read them all a few months back and I picked them up kind of s- slowly throughout the last few months. Uh, so I'm kind of caught up through the hardcover releases of the current series from IDW and it's really good. And then they came out with this last Ronin that was getting a lot of buzz. And again, I didn't really jump on the bandwagon when it first came out. I didn't buy the issues because I normally just don't buy the issues of the Ninja Turtles stuff, right? Um, but then I read the collected edition of that, which is five issues. They originally came out like the old school Ninja Turtle comics kind of were too. As that oversized magazine size, Chris, that I know you despise, like you don't like that. So, But now, to your point, I guess because not everybody loves that. They've now put it to a regular size issue in the newest Last Ronin series. So I guess maybe that, you know, maybe we'll be born a big fan of that or whatever. Just because these aren't oversized issues like the last one was, and it wasn't as like a, a huge release in the sense that like that was the last Ronin essentially was a was their Dark Knight Returns. Like it was a future set story of the Ninja Turtles where all the other Ninja Turtles uh have died except for the last Ronin, which um spoilers guys once again i told you there's spoil shit if you haven't heard about this yet maybe jump ahead uh the last ronin turns out to be um michelangelo which is funny because i think when the series came out and everyone was trying to guess who the last ronin would be of course everybody thought it was going to be Raphael because he's like the more kind of hardcore kind of vengeful of all of them right michelangelo has always been looked at like the jokey one right so i think that's that was a cool thing for them to kind of think of doing it that way in the sense that maybe it would throw some people off right but michelangelo is my favorite turtle so like i was really happy to find that out and that was a great series me and peter actually have a video uh he's been he's come on crack and packs of the chat here on late night collectors community my buddy peter we have a video where we review the hardcover that is in our playlist here on late night collectors community when it came out we both read the hardcover and we talked about it and broke it down anyways 
this is that story's over, but this is them cashing in and finding a pocket of a period of time that was described during that main series of the last Ronin. Hence the lost years title on this, where they're like, okay, we didn't really get into what was happening with the turtles before Michelangelo became the last Ronin. So why don't we kind of tell some stories in that kind of timeline, right? So that's kind of what this, this issue was, I mean, this is also moving the, the story forward a bit from where we left it in the end of the last Ronin where you see Casey, um, Casey's dead, but April who he ended up, um, being together with essentially, uh, April and him had a kid and her, their, their daughter, his name is Casey. Um, and now the turtles have all died in the current timeline and they now they have a bunch of younger turtles that they're taking care of which are um uh, other mutated t turtles that they got their hands on so they're not actually the original turtles now in the main storyline and while this is going on you're getting these past stories about michelangelo and the rest of his brothers prior uh so after he, they ended up getting killed prior to the last story that we read so again it's just them just trying to find like small you know places where they can tell these stories in this current future timeline of the turtles. And, and it was, it wasn't bad. I liked it. It's kind of a slow start. I think this is only like a five issue mini series, but I'm going to continue with it. Cause I was a big fan of the last Ronin. Yeah. And then you see here uh, at the end of this issue, like in the last Ronin story, all of his brothers are like basically like ghosts in his head talking to him essentially. And this is, I guess where it started like previously where, where his dead brothers, um, uh, started kind of communicating with him beyond the grave right so the whole time you got michelangelo's brothers the other turtles basically like judging his moves and shit like that and but it was like at its, at its core it was like a it was like a major like kind of like serious hardcore like ninja story like there's deaths in it michelangelo's like stabbing people the death like so it, it was pretty good so i like if you're if you were a fan of like the cartoon turtles from the 90s this is much more a darker, more hardcore kind of take on that type of stuff where people deaths happen, people die and things matter and this kind of shit. So like I said, this is their, like their dark night returns for the turtles essentially. So, uh, so I give it a 3.75 out of five. I did like it. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next issue and, uh, we'll see where it goes. And then we got Batman one bad day, Catwoman number one. Uh, this was really good too. Um, this is like one of those one bad day one shots that are still going on. I haven't read all of them so far, but this one interested me because I was a big fan of the artist on here, Jamie McKelvey, and he really doesn't do interiors, interiors all that often. Oh, did you pick it up too? I didn't know you did. I had a chance to read it though. Ah, okay. But man, this, he killed it on this fucking issue, man. What I like about Jamie McKelvey is that he's always got a great sense of like, fashion and like current like how people are actually dressing these days and like you know like just like um like his character work like you know what i mean like the, even like their mannerisms and like ev everything that he actually like does in terms of like the actual people like the way they move like they actually feels like you know what i mean like real like he he's really good at that kind of stuff and he just draws really good looking people so like putting him on a catwoman book is like a no-brainer uh, so this is just an oversized issue of great art from Jamie McKelvey, as far as I was concerned. In terms of the story, you know, it is a basic kind of Catwoman steals something type story and runs into Batman and they fuck, you know, type of thing. Like, we've seen this kind of thing before a lot in the comics. <laughs> I wouldn't say this is anything new or original, the story that they tell, but it does connect to some shit that happened to her in her past. And, and as a result paired with the good art it was a great one-shot story i think for catwoman still even though it's nothing like new um it was a well done well told story um you know with top tier talent so i thought it was i thought it was excellent i think you're gonna enjoy it chris um nice yeah i mean this is again this is this is the reason i picked it up the art is amazing uh he's very good and uh i was happy to happy to to have this and uh i picked it up and it did not disappoint so yeah, Catwoman. Yeah, you know, even though look, look how sexy his Batman is too. <laughs> I could just front and center there. <laughs> I know, right? Like he just, you know, and then you even see her get punched out here towards the end in a fight. You get to see her all bruised up. He does like great, great character work, man. It's just it's good stuff. So yeah, I give it. I ooh, yeah, I give it a four. Like I said, it wasn't anything like new, but I think it was it was a solid, solid Catwoman one shot. Very good. So yeah, I give it a four as well. All oh, right, cool. next up, 
Harley Quinn 11. Harley Quinn 11. Oh, 26. I don't know why I put 11. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> why are you talking about this, Chris? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm still enjoying this, but uh, I think this uh, this story is getting a little stretched out too long. I don't know if this is like a, supposed to be a six issue arc or something. I think they could have done this in four. I think they could be doing a whole lot more with all these variant Harleys. You know, they kind of brought them all out and now they just all tied them up. But I think they'd be doing so much more with this story. So I'm feeling kind of a little, little let down, let's say. What do you think about it? Yeah, you know, you make a good point. Um, I don't think that was my initial reaction while reading it, but you're absolutely right. Um, but I also think I I've had a lot of fun with this arc. Um, I've liked the direction of the book lately, and the art was good. So I'm still enjoying the book. But I hear what you're saying. I think uh, the, the the next issue, and this is probably why the next issue is the last issue of this arc, and then a new writer comes on board with a new Ooh. artist. And I'm okay. really excited for the artist, the writer. I haven't read too much that she's written, so I'll, like we'll see how that goes. I, although this writer, Stephanie Phillips, I was fairly new to her work when she started on the book as well, too. I think she's done a pretty good job overall. Um, some arcs are better than others, but I think uh, when it's all said and done, I think this is a pretty solid run still for the character. Um, and I really enjoyed this compared to what preceded it. The <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not just that one arc, but even the series that came out before this series came out the the tail end of it was not so good so and like i said i've just bought harley for years and years and years just because christine continues to buy it because she loves the character so much so i've read a lot of harley comics so um th th there's there's certain points where the book was like at its highest point like years ago like i think when the new 52 when the series first came out when they actually had an for first ongoing or second ongoing series of all time that came out uh, it was good for years and years and years. Then it kind of like got what it's been like a roller coaster in terms of quality, I think, over the last few years. So I think this is, you know, this is somewhere in the middle of all that, I would say. But yeah, you know, I guess we get the final showdown at the end of this issue and we'll see what happens. But I, I think you're right. It is getting a little long in the tooth where this is this could have been something they could have wrapped up. I think it's just one of those things where they, they knew this new writer was coming on and they were like, OK, yeah. They're tell your story. I think this was done in four issues. It probably would be a lot more impactful, but yeah, I'm, like I say, I'm still enjoying the story and it's, uh, you know, I think the art is great inside and that cover is sick for this one, you know, with that, whatever the Harley who laughs or whatever they call those freaking death metal characters. Yeah. So what'd you give this one? I'll give it a 3.75. It's still good. Yeah. Same. Yeah. 3.75. All right. Next up, we got Thor number 30. I got this cover, the basic cover here. I got the basic cover as well somewhere. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I got it there. Well, what are you going to say about this? I, I like the art there. Is this Nick Klein or something? Yeah. Well, he was the main artist on a lot of the Donny Cates run. Uh, for yeah. Probably. Yeah. He's so I guess that's what kind of makes it odd is that you get the same art, but just reading through this was just a slog. Like, oh my God. And I think you're telling me this was the same writer that did the, the Jane Foster and Mighty Thor. Yeah. And I had the same problem with that, too, you know. And, like, this should be good. There's a lot of good, you know, got yes. Thanos in there doing his stuff. Thank you. That's exactly what my big comment was going to be is I don't know why this isn't working. It's the writing. Like, it's it should be fucking good. Like, even the end of this issue, I was like, yeah. yeah. But I'm like, this was so fucking boring. How do you make this boring? I don't understand. I was like, I don't, you got Thanos. You got his fucking Corvus Glaive, this guy. You got, you know, you have all the right pieces, but it's just not yeah. clicking for me. It's just so, like whatever like yeah like, you know, if, if the art was bad on this this would really freaking drop yeah but like just reading this like the, i don't know i just there's just no excitement in reading it it's it's just hard to read for some reason you know i agree i hundred that's that's exactly what i was going to say about this book yeah you know, i spend more time trying to figure out how to say all these words like what are these droggers or something or yeah freaking why don't you just put some vowels in there man relax but look at that that's fucking a great spread yeah you're right yeah. But it doesn't mean like I have no idea what the fuck anything's going on in there. <laughs> I'm still I'm trying to read the words. Yeah, can't even learn what's happening in there. You know, I mean, it lets out those freaking lightning dogs or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there should just be no words in this one. You can just look at the pictures. Yeah, and then like you say, boom, 
it's an ending like that. Like, oh, anyways. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you a hundred percent. Though it's just not working for me either. Like there's there's a lot of interesting things happening or thing like characters showing up, and it's got all the like it's it's just for whatever reason it, it must be the writing because like yeah, you and me are both saying that, and I kind of went into this thinking like okay, I haven't really loved some of the other things I've read by her, but like I'm uh, this is a series I really enjoy, so I was willing yeah. to give her a, a, you know a, a shot here and and not try to kind of be like you know hate on it for no fucking reason just because she was writing it, but yeah no it's just not working for me either. Uh, and but like you said I, I I will continue in the hopes that Kate's comes back. They haven't actually officially said he's off the book. He just took some time away. Yeah. I hope everything's okay in that sense with him. But um, if it was you're right, if they had a bum artist on this. I'd probably drop it right now. Like it's, you know I mean? Like, but like, again, it's one of those things where like Thanos is in this or in some yep. in the flashbacks, you got doom showing up at the end of this issue. Like there, there's, there should be, this should be much better than it is, is the problem. right? Yeah. Like after release, all you can say is for Donnie Cates, where are you? And come back. Yeah. Yeah. The book needs him for sure. So what would you, what would you give this then? I give it a 3.5 yeah. just because big things are happening in there, but this could, you know, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. could be a, it could be a five, it could be a two, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, next up, Action Comics ten fifty one, Chris. Okay, this started the, I guess, the new Action Comic. What the heck? Where did everything go? <laughs> Chris is losing comics by the second. Folks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. Action Comics, whatever, ten fifty one. Yeah. The first supersized issue, so they're kind of moving more to like anthology type. But just before I get into the stories here, like, why do you even need a Justice League when you got this freaking giant super family of like how many are there? Like, who can stop these people? They could do whatever they want, <laughs> but I guess they just decide not to for whatever reason. But anyways, that's besides the point. But so basically, the the first story, there's three stories in there. The first story seemed, I think, is a continuation from ten from Action Comics ten fifty. I don't, I don't really care. This, you know, I think in the last issue, the big, big thing was that uh, Superman got his secret identity back, and I don't know. They don't really mention that too much in here. And you know, I'm looking forward to this Metallo, but I don't know if that story is going to be moved on to the Superman story or the Superman comic that's coming up. But yeah, that Metallo looks pretty sick there at the end. And anyways, but the second story was. It's uh, it was a continuation from the death of Superman, the thirtieth anniversary. Yeah, and is that John Kent there, the the kid? Like I don't know why he's a little kid again, but so this maybe... so, so they originally Dan Jurgens and the same artist Lee Weeks, they're the ones that actually brought soup this version of Superman back post New Fifty Two. I actually have that trade paper back on my uh, my shelf here. It's a really good story um, yeah. because the New Fifty Two Superman. They basically killed him and brought back the classic version of Superman from the 90s, which is Dan Jurgens was the writer at that time, like from, you know, the doomsday shit and everything else. They brought him back and brought him with a family and Jonathan, and they are the ones that basically created that, that son and everything else. So this is kind of him, I think, picking up where he left off with uh, with him wearing this dark suit and everything else, because he came and basically killed the other Superman and said that he was the fake Superman and this is the real Superman, because everyone hated the new 52 Superman at a certain point, so they're like, okay, get this fucking guy out of here. And then, and, then, and then they started this thing with him being married to Lois and uh, and having a son, and that they've kind of just moved forward from there, and they've kind of kept it, like, it was a big hit with people. And uh, and that's why I think this is that timeline, essentially. The current timeline was what we're used to now with him being married and all that. But that wasn't the case with the New 52. He wasn't married. His parents were dead. Like, all this shit had happened during that period of time, and like, no one was interested in it, right? So Yeah. So like I think that kind of threw things for a loop. I don't know when these things were kind of happening. I think this one here, whatever, the kid, he picked up a shard of uh, Doomsday's bone. And supposedly that's a big deal, and maybe it's going to corrupt them. Who knows? And I don't know if there's some stuff with Martian Manhunter in here, or I'm getting all confused about when this, what this Doomsday shard is doing, or this Doomsday. He was like living on in somebody's memory at one point, and they were thinking he's going to come back that way. But uh, I don't know. And then there's the third story, and that kind of uh, followed up from a, a power, one of the Lazarus Planet stories where Power Girl is now. Uh, 
I guess she's psychic, and she has some psychic link with somebody. And Nightwing shows up with uh, Beast Boy, and Beast Boy is trapped as a calf. And they end up going in Beast Boy's mind to try and, you know, free him or to try and, you know, heal his trauma or something. I don't know. I think they're all a bunch of hokey stories. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if uh, I'm going to be following this Action Comics as issues. Maybe I'll read them online. And we'll see how it goes from there. I wasn't too impressed with, that, with it as a whole. Especially for, you know, their, the dawn of the new DC. It's... It's not coming up with a you know a full on sunshine here. Yeah, and this is the um, this is basically um, this is how it's going to be is with these three storylines every issue. Right? Yeah. Well, I'm, I I don't think it'll be the three all the way through. Maybe they'll just do arcs and switch them out as they need to, which isn't a bad thing. But right. I don't know. They're not great stories. Yeah. So what'd you give it? I'll give it a three point five. Okay. Nothing fancy. Nothing special. A nice cover. Right. But... Next Man. up, Lazarus Planet, uh, We Once Were Gods, number one. Yeah, I was reading this online. I don't think I made it even all the way through to the end. This whole Lazarus Planet stuff, I think all it is is almost like the timeless one shot, but it's just they have a whole bunch of them. I th all they do is lead into the new issues that are coming out. You know, you'll, they'll have some sort of story in there, and then everything at the end will follow this in, you know, Superboy Man of Tomorrow. Follow this over here. Yeah. Follow that over there. And I think I might have got through this story. Then this maybe this is where I got that Martian Manhunter stuff mixed up with. But ah, uh, I don't know. I I, I I didn't even finish reading it. Yeah, so it's looking good now. If you're looking at the pictures, but once again, uh, yeah. So oh, just, I, I just read this story too. Just, it's all just hokey stuff. It's all just filler. Yeah, trying to hype true. up the new stories. These are setups for the new Dawn of DC books. Or yeah, coming out right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well. Yeah, nothing. You know, I was hyped for that, uh, the first, whatever, the Lazarus Planet Alpha. And I think maybe the finale might be good, but I think all these other ones are all just just hype stories for the new series that are coming out. Yeah, the Shazam one looks good. Still, I don't know. Yeah. They're trying to find Billy by, or Billy stuck to the rock. And I guess he comes back because now he decides the rock doesn't have to trap him or he can take, he can be part of the rock. Yeah. So, yeah. Unless you're really up and uh, up in all those DC business, I try to be, but you know, I don't, I don't follow any of those stories that were going on. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So, what'd you give this? Uh, like I said, I didn't even finish it, so I don't feel like I should give it. But I give it like a three point two five. Yeah, that wasn't great. I'm glad I'm not buying. That's for sure. There you go. <laughs> uh, next up, I got Creep Show number five. Uh, the big takeaway from this issue was in the letters column at the back of the issue, they had confirmed that they will be coming back later this year with another five issue mini series of creep show with, uh, you know, uh, same thing, two more stories each issue. Cause they said they were going to have 10 new stories. So I guess new creative teams and all that kind of stuff. So I guess this was, you know, for them getting the rights to be able to do this comic this year, uh, skybound, which is Robert Kirkman's imprinted image, uh, also to help promote the show, I guess, like, um was successful i guess in that sense because they're doing another mini series of it by the end of the year they said so that's cool i guess um you know i'll probably end up picking it up i think this is good for what it is uh like i said not every short story is going to be a banger some of them may be disappointing i i would say like one out of every two stories every issue is not not the best like so you're kind of got a you know 50 percent kind of like there's a couple issues where both stories are good, but there's 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 a couple issues out of the five where it was just like only one story was really good. I felt like, um, but there's always something I felt like I haven't had an issue yet where I'm like I hated both stories in it. This one, the first story was okay. It was probably the weaker of the two. I would say this is they had like a lot of new kind of younger kid lingo type shit going on in this. Like they're talking of the story's called Thirst Trap, and it's about some dude that's like, you know, like taking sexy pictures of himself, setting and sending the thirst traps out. And then I guess the phone, something happens and it turns him into an old ass man. And then there's like a demon thing involved. Like, I guess he's doing like, it's taking the soul out of you or something like that. I don't know. But I didn't really understand fully what the fuck was going on, but it, <laughs> I, that one was okay. Like it ended up with this guy getting killed, but it wasn't the strongest story I felt like. And the writer that wrote it, I'm not a huge fan of, so, uh, you know, I'm not surprised I didn't love it. But uh, the second story was much better. Again, I wasn't really familiar uh, with this creative team, wasn't familiar with any of the artists on this issue. 
Um, this was really interesting. It was like about this girl who turns out like she's part of like some rich family and they're having like some sort of ball or something. And, uh, she, you know, she dresses up and everything. And then you find that she basically turns into like this bug creature, essentially, I guess they weren't able to have kids you find out and they did some sort of fucked up thing where they were able to, I don't know what the hell they did, but they, <laughs> they got, they got like, uh, when she was younger, they got this like creature, I, I essentially that turned out, turned out to be her daughter, at least to a certain point in time of her life. And then she transforms into this fucking bug or whatever the hell she is like a praying mantis and ends up killing everybody. So that was cool. <laughs> but, uh, you know, again, this was not one of the stronger issues. This is the last issue of this season one or whatever they're calling of it. This, uh, this five issue mini series. So, I give this one a, a 3.5, but there's been some good stuff in it. And, you know, they're forgettable, though. I, I think if you're into those kind of one and done short horror story type stuff, um, you might want to check this out. Otherwise, it's it's not something I'm going to be buying the trade of and put on my shelf. Let's just say this isn't a double dipping situation. I'll pick up the issues and I, maybe I'll even read the next round online, but um, I'm not going to. It's not something I'm going to remember or cherish in that sense. So uh then you got saga 61 uh i've dropped this in issues now because i buy the hard covers of this series so I, I i said to myself you know i'm not gonna continue to read it in issues and i think that since it came back from fucking being on hiatus for three years i was very underwhelmed by that first arc so this is still a very popular book though so i was like and i'm curious i fucking read 60 issues of this series already so i'm like okay i'm gonna continue the reading this uh digitally and i'll just pick up the hard covers um, so yeah, in this issue, there is a huge possible, uh, story change by the end of the issue though, is what we find out. You're seeing some past moments of, uh, the main character's father in this issue. And then you're seeing some characters that we haven't seen for a while that showed up. And basically, you know, now at the end of the last arc, they're like, they were like living in this ship. That was a tree. That was also their home in space. That got burnt up and destroyed at the end of the last arc. So now they're kind of like on another planet now. Um, the mother is still trying to make ends meet, doing like shady deals of sorts. And, you know, they're kind of broke and they're trying to like survive out in the galaxy here. And their, their people are still at war. They're like in the, in the middle of like an intergalactic war, essentially. Um, so, yeah, it's just picking up on a lot of strands, I think, from the previous first 60 issues now. And characters are starting to show up like this one right here. And uh, like from from, you know, years ago when whenever this this book was uh, really hot at that time when it first came out. But by the end of it, uh, it was revealed that it's there's a possibility that her father, one of the main characters of the book who died in the in the first half of this series, there's a way that he can possibly be brought back to life. That was kind of the cliffhanger that they left on in the end of that last page. Which I think if they were to do that, I think, uh, I, I don't know, if it doesn't stick and they just bring him back, I'm th that's going to be some sort of bullshit move. So I hope that's not the way it, it goes, but we'll see what happens. So I gave this a 3.5. It's not anywhere as good as it used to be. I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest with you, but I'll keep reading it. Uh, Exterminators number five, Chris, the end of this miniseries, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cover there, yeah. So I think they like. I'm surprised they only basically came out with eight covers for this. I figured they'd be freaking dropping like freaking 10 variants with all these ones. But yeah. otherwise, uh, overall, I think it's been a great series. Uh, the story itself, you know, for the whole series hasn't been the greatest, let's say. But when you you can take any panel out of any comic on a finding page and it'd be something you want to buy this comic and read it. You know, just thinking about it, you know, I think this last issue here. There, uh, it kind of wraps everything up. They have them go after, oh, yeah, page there, but anyways, they go after, uh, the I guess the vampire that that picked them up. You got Laura Kinney fighting, um, the collector, and I think that was a, a nice battle there. And the collector really kind of has to flex his power there to, to so show what he can do. And I think there's a few pages where they kind of have like a text group chat or something. I thought that was kind of funny. And then the best thing at the end is say, uh, you know, the exterminators aren't over and they'll return, or it says exterminators will return. I guess Sorma kind of sort of similar to at the end of, you know, like the Guardians of the Galaxy or something. They just say, you know, this isn't over yet. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, if it comes back with the same artist, you know, you know, 
you know, maybe the same writer, or, you know, if somebody else has got some good ideas for them, I just hope they have some doing some good, fun stuff. You know, you got to find the right tone for this. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you don't want something too serious, but not something too flaky though, either. Great. And magic. great look at magic. Yeah. <laughs> they look at everybody there like basically they have all these what are the four main characters there they can add, add magic to this team you know it ain't gonna make the team any worse no <laughs> and basically they just have them all in cosplay like you know i think freaking one of them was dressed up as sailor moon the whole time another one's dressed up as a cheerleader and they're all dressed up in all these outfits and they could find reasons to have them wearing funny outfits or fun outfits you know what i like about I'm it down yeah, and and I, I ordered the trade of this already because I was con I, after you talking about it and seeing the art on this, I didn't really want to read any of the issues because I was just interested already in, in in the look of the book and how the the fun tone of it. So I'm I, I ordered the trade paperback, uh, and I hope it does come back. So maybe I'll pick it up the next one if I enjoy the trade. But what I like about it the most is other than like uh, Laura uh, Wolverine here, they're utilizing these other girl uh, X Men, which uh, women X Men, which aren't really used all that much. Boom Boom, Jubilee, yeah. Dan you know what i mean like these are characters that are good characters but they're underused and they found a place to kind of put them so i kind of like that like i'm like okay that's cool because like these are great characters and like you said if they get the tone of it right with these guys like it could be something that you know they can continue with right so like yeah i think it's good because when the fuck do you see dazzler or boom boom in that book right or like, yeah more right so um they yeah i think they're like in all these you know jubilee it's the first time i've really liked jubilee as a character in here as in a comic yeah, I think it's right. You know, I don't know if they need Wolverine in there with Laura Kenny, but I guess she's sort of like the the common, the, the straight face. You know, like there's a few times there she's in her costume, you know, and they're like, "Hey, you know, what are you wearing your costume for?" I go, oh, nobody told me it's a, it was a free for all. But that's like let's say this this comic, this whole ish series was a great surprise, and I'm glad I uh, I kind of glad I went out to to get it. I'd give this a four. I give the series easy a four. Nice. And, uh, you know, like, I, I don't need the new one coming out too soon, but I hope it's not too long either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, next up, we got Amazing Spider-Man number 18. I got this cover, the homage John Romita Stegman. Ooh, yeah, I wanted that one. But it's based off of, uh, is it 200 or 250? I forget which 100, actually. I, I forgot which fucking cover this is. must be 100 because it's John Romita Sr. But, yeah, I got yeah. the homage cover here. Yeah, I wanted to get that one, but... I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> What'd you think of this? Uh, not bad. It's more of the same from the last issue. But uh, what, what's it? Madeline Pryor. Freaking that, that face turn was just a little too quick, a little too convenient, yeah. a little too much. But uh, and I, I just feel like they're trying to recapture all these sort of Venom moments with Chasm. You know, they kind of turn him to King Chasm at the end or somewhere in the middle, somewhere there. I'm loving this, this rep car guy or whatever you call him. <laughs> I know. I know he needs to stick around, but I hope he shows up in the future sometime, <laughs> somehow. I like him too. <laughs> I think he's freaking awesome. He's like, he's like a Venom in a Spider-Man costume. Like that one time we see him running, oh, he's got the tongue going off. Oh, perfect, this guy. I love this character. And... You know, I kind of like that uh, with that Kazaman, what's her name, Hallow's Eve. You know, they're a little pissed off what would happen. But I still can't see that Madeline, that prior to she spends all this time scheming, conniving. And then, you know, I did read that, uh, whatever, the Dark the dark Web X-Men 3 where, you know, whatever, Jean Grey gives her, uh, gives her the memories back. And now she's like all, you know, hunky-dory. But uh, now we'll see how it goes. I'm still not, I'm not extremely disappointed with it. Mm-hmm. Because I think the art is great in this one too. Again, Chasm's looking pretty cool in there. You know, I'm surprised they're doing all this stuff with them. Maybe this character is going to have legs. Who knows? I'm uh, I'm looking forward to the wrap up with the uh, finale that comes out next week. I've really enjoyed this event right out the gate for the new year. I think this is a strong event within the uh, Spider-Man books. Uh, with minimal tie-ins, I love the X-Men one as we've talked about here. I, I it wasn't. Like it didn't come a surprise as much as a surprise for me for the quick turnaround, just because I literally just witnessed that with her in the X Men miniseries. Which... Yeah, well, that's it. I read the X Men, so like I say, just I mean, story wise, the her turning around is crazy. Yeah, I agree. I agree, but you know they got to wrap this up, and I, yeah. I, I this doesn't have enough juice. Like this isn't interesting enough. It's fun, and 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 like I said, it's been dumb and fun, and I don't need to see like fucking ten issues of this kind of thing. Yeah, definitely not. <clears throat> 
So, um, but yeah, this was, <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. I love the rec rap guy. I love how they all kind of take him together again in this. And I think the real star of this issue, other than the art has been just a lot of the funny dialogue and jokes. I think I laughed again, like a few times throughout this issue, just because it was so ridiculous and, uh, the shit that they're saying that they think is correct. And, and yeah. <laughs> the bad guys even right. And, and, uh, you know, there was a whole scene where, you know, they just didn't know what to do. Like after, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like hanging around, you know, like that sinister six or whatever, those guys. And they're just, yeah. Really, it's that way. We don't need that. There's one way it goes. We don't need to say our name. But then he says his name anyways. Right, that's what he means. Like we don't have to say this, and then he's just like, "Yeah." And then, time like, we come on a panel, we don't have to say her name. <laughs> but I'm whatever, Doctor Oddball. It's so stupid, but it, it made me laugh so much. I wasn't as good. I don't think it was as fun and crazy as the last issue. That yeah, this well, just because we saw it already. Yeah, but yeah, but it was still very fun. So good. Yeah, yeah. So what'd you give this one? I'll give this a four. Like I said, I'm liking this. I'm liking this series more than I thought I would. Like, I thought this dark web was going to be some freaking, you know, some crazy whatever. And then, you know, you kind of saw what it was, and I was kind of a little put off by it. But now when I see it, it is, I'm liking it. Yeah, I also gave it a four. Yeah, great issue again. I, I'm having a lot of fun with this. All right. Uh, uh, let's uh, bounce over to some news very quickly. And then we got some DC solicits. So let's uh, let's let's move ahead here uh, before we get to our wrap up of the show here in the news. There's a new Avengers creative team announced this past week since the last time we've recorded. Of course, you know that Avengers Assemble is going on right now, which is the end of Jason Aaron's like, I don't know, I don't know how I think he's been on the book like five, six years. I don't know. It's been a long time. So. Uh, this is the wrap up and they've now announced Avengers number one. That's coming out in May, which I knew we were going to see soon because we just seen the April list this last week. So we would have found out anyways, in the next couple of weeks, but, um, they've announced that the new, uh, creative team of Avengers number one coming on May 17th is, uh, Jed McKay, who's been, uh, you know, we've been a fan of around here. We've talked about a bunch of books and we kept saying like, they got to put this guy on a bigger book because he's kind of doing all these like BC list type books and he's making a name for himself, you know, within the doctor strange books, moon Knight, and like black cat and these kind of things. Right. And, but they've been good books. So, um, I, this makes total sense to me. I mean, I know we, me and Chris, we were talking, we thought it was maybe going to be Donny Cates. This would be in his big triumphant return, uh, to comics because he's been taking some time off and, uh, but I'm yeah, not, but that time off was real, like personal time, not, no, I you know, know. Kind of hype time, you know what I mean? No, 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 it has been as far as I can tell. Like he hasn't yeah. basically said what's been going on, but it seems personal issues for sure. Whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, you know, hopefully he's okay, but, uh, but I'm happy with this. I think Jen McKay, that's, that's a, you know, I'm happy with that. I'll, I'll be definitely picking this up. How about you, Chris? Oh, for sure. And he's also and who's the artist. Is that, uh, what did you say? CK? CM is that the one that's in the black cat that did those black cat trades? Yep. Yep. Not bad. I don't mind that either. Yeah. I was just about to say that he's paired back up with the artist that he worked with primarily on his black cat series uh, that he did um cf villa so yeah so this is uh that black cat team on the avengers so and it sounds like again he his team is going to be consist of uh captain marvel iron man thor captain america black panther scarlet witch and vision so it seems like kind of in line with like the movie kind of avengers for the most part at least a version of that yeah um but it, you know he's talking again big picture type stuff like epic type stories you know everyone kind of says that shit when they're gonna take on the avengers but Here's hoping, man. I, I'm a big, we're a big fans of Jed McKay, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I was excited to hear this news. Yeah, I'm looking back to like looking forward to getting Avengers back as an Avengers story because lately the Avengers I've been reading, you know, they've been running around through time and, and they haven't really been Avengers stories. They're just introducing all these kind of Avenger variants. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the, the new run here. Same. Yeah, I'm looking forward to jumping on. With are they going to start a number one again, or you think are they going to be continuing with the numbers? No, they announced it's a number one. I mean, there's always going to be that legacy numbering. Yeah, but yeah. But like, it's a number one for me. I know? gotta get over that. That's that's my dislike personally, but that's good, anyways. Uh, well, that's why they got the legacy numbering for you, Chris. <laughs> legacy numbering. Uh, and then also, legacy. In the news, a new Tom Taylor book was announced. He teased a couple of days ago on his Twitter that, well, you know, stay tuned tomorrow. I'm going to be announcing uh, a new book that I'll be writing. And I guess he's part of this whole new Dawn of DC lineup as well now. And he's coming out with a book in May. 
And uh, I think it's May. Let me just see here. Probably. Uh, I don't see that here. But I, yeah, May 16th. Yeah, so it's the same week actually as Avengers number one that I just talked about. And uh, spinning out a dark crisis and the events that just occurred in the Nightwing issue, as me and Chris again predicted, we just talked about Nightwing, Nightwing 100 last week. We weren't sure if it was going to be a Titans Justice League book or a Titans book, but it is the Teen Titans. They are back with Tom Taylor and Nicola Scott on art. She's a great artist as well. Another artist that draws really good looking people. So I think she's going to do a great job on the Titans. Um, I'm, I'm in, man. I don't know about you. How about you? Are you in for this one or what? I'll probably be in. I'll give I'll give the Teen Titans a chance. Yeah, yeah. I've never. I have been liking their miniseries. Like, there's that blood pack going on. I'm waiting till it's done just so I can read it all together. Yeah. Uh, that Titans United back a while ago. I didn't mind that. I like the Teen Titan characters. I've never read an ongoing Teen Titans book, so this I'm um, loving his Nightwing. He is the t leader of the team, most likely. And so I'm I'm in. I'm I'm definitely there yeah. for it. it. Looks like Cyborg's on the team. He's not part of the Justice League anymore. So. This seems like the classic lineup, Starfire, like all the people that basically all the Titans that just yeah. Nightwing 100 are going to be with them, right? So, uh, and I guess this is going to take place instead of the Justice League now for now, right? And I think it's going to be the Titans instead of the Justice League because they've been moved off the playing field temporarily, but that's only to plan ahead and again bring them back bigger and better than ever, supposedly, as they do in comics. They like to phase shit out and then bring it back like they always do, right? It's all cyclical. And they, Is there like some, like, the kind of like the anti-Teen Titans, whatever, the Hive? Is that something? Like Jinx and, do you know, are those characters that are, are they in DC or no? Is I'm that not, just something in the cartoon? No, I mean, it's, it's pot, is this from Teen Titans Go or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably then. Teen, Teen Titans Go, apparently, I've never watched it. I've heard it's a great cartoon. Uh, I heard it's a great show, yeah. But I, I, I've, uh, it is apparently very in continuity with the stuff that. Yeah. Happened. So I'm just, I'm, I'm not familiar with that, but I, I'm, I'm sure that is the case with, what, with the characters you're talking about. So yeah. I mean, I see those people show up too. Yeah. So yeah. So here's uh, hoping it's going to be a start of a great run. Uh, there you go. Two new books that we're going to be picking up and looking forward to in the month of May. Teen Titans by Tom Taylor and. Jed McKay on Avengers. I'm happy with that. These are good teams, right? You did say at the end of our discussion of Nightwing, you're like, oh, no, it's going to be some fucking bum-ass team, and it's going to be some shit book. Or so what's <laughs> I remember you're I'll like, because yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, is Taylor going to do the Titans? You're like, oh, I doubt it. Because <laughs> everyone thought that it was just going to be the direction of Nightwing now was going to be him with the Titans, right? So um, if he can focus on his Titans business only in Titans and then keep the Nightwing stuff separate, although they are in Bloodhaven now, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. That's where they're building the Titan, the tower, I guess. Right. Yeah. So, all right. So here's hoping they're uh, they're good starts, man. So here we go. Uh, that is the in the news for today. And now let's go over the new comic solicitations for DC quickly. We talked about Marvel last week. Um, let me just bring that up here. Okay. Uh, once again, shout out to comicreleases.com. This is where we normally go over the solicits. Uh, it's always really good. And they are updating it constantly. Like if you're a collected edition, look, they're bringing out a Team Titans Go uh, box set of uh, trade paperbacks, it looks like here. So, nice. yeah, if you're if you're into collected editions as well, like I am, um, not just uh, single issues, this is always a good, because they're always pushing things back and changing dates on releases and everything. This is a really good site for that kind of stuff to track that too. Okay, so let's uh, look at some of the things we might pick up or be reading online uh, throughout the month of, um, this is April 2023 for DC. So you got Dawn of DC Free Comic Book Day Special Edition. Okay, no. so I guess this, is their, this is their teaser, I'm sure, of a bunch of these new books that are coming out this uh, Free Comic Book Day, I guess. So yeah, I'll, I'll try to grab one of these. Yeah, it's probably going to be like a teaser of all these new series that they have coming out or planned. And by then, yeah. sure we'll know more of them. Uh, what do we got here? This is like some young adult stuff here and more free comic book day offerings here. Girl taking over Clark and Lex. I don't think I'll be picking those up. Those are like, no. T uh, those are like teen books, I think, or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, green arrow. Number one, they're starting green arrow series. He's been pretty awesome lately. I don't know. I, I might check this out online. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I'll probably check it out online. See who's in there. See who's drawing in there. Oh, green arrow. Like you say, he's been, uh, He's been a popular character the last bit. He's been in the middle of everything. Mm -hmm. Nice covers. Uh, then he got Superboy, the man of tomorrow. It's the one from the 90s. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be checking this out. You? 
No, probably not. I'm a fan of him, though. And then we got Adventures of Superman, John Kent, uh, Tom Taylor writing this miniseries of uh, the new John Kent miniseries. Well, the story, I think, isn't too bad. From what I understand, it's uh, somebody's killing all the Marvel, the multiversal Kal-El's. And they don't want to get this Superman in there because they don't want him to die, so they get John Kent to go. Okay. I might read it online and see what's going on, but maybe I'll buy the number one, but I doubt it. Then we got uh, Superman number three. I'll be reading this. Yeah, I think I'll be reading this. I might be dropping action, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with action. Um, but Superman, I'm going to check out. So hopefully it's good. So yeah, I, I I plan on reading this still by this point. We'll see. Action Comics 1054. Like you said, you might check it out online, if anything. Well, we'll see. Okay. Uh, then you got Harley Quinn 29. Yeah, I'll be I'll be getting this for sure. Yeah, I'll be continuing it. Always great covers for Harley Quinn. Yeah. Uh, Unstoppable Doom Patrol number two. Not picking it up, but again, I'm interested in it, and I might read it, be reading it online digitally because I do love the Doom Patrol, but I won't be picking up the issue. It's a mini series. That's, that's part of the new Dawn of DC shit, too. And then we got Batman 134. Yes, still continuing with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some more future type stories, I guess, here. It's maybe it's still seeing. Yeah. Timeline. Wow. Oh, that's the art germ. Uh, uh, is it? Yes. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. What is that black cat or the Catwoman one? That's that is a I think that's a variant, the ratio variant that or is. something. Yeah. Nice. Detective Comics 1071. No. I'm trying to drop it, but fuck, they keep on giving it to me still. Batman and the Joker, Deadly Door number six. Yes, I'll be picking I'll definitely it. read this online. Regret yeah. not buying it. Yeah, it's been great. Really big surprise, honestly. I, I wouldn't have expected it to be as good as it's been. Riddler year one, number four, no. Uh, oh, they got Mike Mignola to do a cover. That's interesting. That's the Hellboy artist. Really cool. Uh, Lazarus Planet, Revenge of the Gods, number three, no. You? No, I'll read it, but uh, who knows if I'll, I'll try and read it if I can uh, get through it. Yeah, I guess this is its own mini series. This Revenge of the Yeah, Gods. a lot of those ones in the last one are continuing through this uh, Revenge of the God stuff, but up to number four, it looks like. Yeah, this is the last issue here. Uh, Superman Lost, number two, no. DC Speechless, number one. This seems interesting, but apparently, this artist is uh, bringing his style of humor to the DCU in six short stories featuring funny moments in your favorite superheroes' lives. Where does Harley buy her mallets? What happens to Superman's radioactive clothes? What's a day off like for Cyborg? It's a silent comic, apparently told probably by an animator of some sort. He seems like he's yeah. it's Gustavo Dor. So I say like a European maybe animator or something. It's interesting. I don't know if I'm going to read it, but that is it. Like, I like that. I'll probably take a look at it online. I don't know about it. Yeah, they're trying to do different things, though. I can appreciate that. Yeah. Icon versus hardware, number three. No. Static. No. Sandman Universe Nightmare Country, The Glass House. I, I ordered the trade of the first miniseries that they did. This is by James uh, Tynan, the fourth here. He's a really good writer and a horror writer. So I picked up the first miniseries in trade. I've pre ordered it. I'm not going to, I might, if I read it in time by the time this starts, I might read this online, this miniseries, because apparently the, the first one he did was really, really good. He's just been doing these like, Stories uh, called Nightmare Country set in the Sandman universe. So uh, I'm interested in that. Uh, Batman Vengeance of Bane. It's a reprint. No. Batgirl 17. No. Batman Inc. No. Batman Superman World's Finest 14. Yes, I'll continue reading this. As long as they... It looks like they're, they're finally moving on from that fucking sidekick story. So I'm in. No. <laughs> but if he shows back up, which I'm sure he will at some point, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, because I wasn't a big fan of that either. That one Batman the Adventures Continue Season 3, no Black Adam, no Blue Beetle Graduation Day, no Danger Street 5, no, I'm dropping it. I'm gonna read it when it's collected. Uh, DC Ruby number three, no, ah, Deceased War of the Undead Gods number eight, Ooh, yes, yes, yes. I gotta see these covers. I think some kick-ass covers. This is the last issue of the of the series, and apparently this is supposed to be the end of deceased. Yeah, Ooh, that's a nice cover there. That is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. 
nothing too crazy. I probably would say that one's probably the best looking one there. But. Yeah, if that's not a ratio, I'm gonna try and pick that one up. Uh, then you got Justice Society of America number five. Like I said today, I'll probably continue reading this online. It's a 12 issue series, so yeah. Multiversity hardly screws up the DCU. No, Nightwing 103. Yes, be continued. Yeah. yeah. Oh, spinner rack. Uh, it's like a postcard thing. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's that creep show comic you have, that spinner rack. That's uh it's supposed to be a big deal on uh, on a com on a comic cover. Yeah, look. <laughs> spinner rack co covers are collectible. See? <laughs> that's cool. Um Okay, yeah, let's get the Titans there. Uh, yeah, definitely picking that up. Poison Ivy 11. What are you doing with this series? I'll probably keep on reading it, but uh, I don't think I'll be buying it unless they give it to me. But no, unless they got some super sick covers, but I don't know, it's not bad. Man, your, your, your shop must love you. They just fucking pawn all these things on you that you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Star Girl, no, no. Batman, Scooby Doo Mysteries, no. The Flash, uh, no. Joker, man, to stop laughing. No. Sandman, Universe, Dead Boy Detectives. No. Tim Drake, Robin. No. Wildcats. No. Wonder Woman. Are you reading this still? Or I'm reading this online. So there's a pretty good storyline going on in there now. And supposedly there's going to be a big uh, Wonder Woman's going to side with the gods. It's not uh, not the human. So we'll see where that goes. But okay. I think that's it. That's it, man. Not much. Not much. Not much. All right. You know, you can say it's not much when we talk about what's uh, what we're buying next week. Yeah. I don't know about you, but oof. yeah, no, same, same. I mean, I've uh, you know, I'll get into it here because uh, I kind of had to scramble for some things to read online as a result of the fact that I literally have one comic physical comic release that I've pick I'm picking up next week. So, I, I, there's a few things I'll be reading, I think, digitally that are going to make it for like a, like a six issue week, I think, by the end yeah. of it. Yeah, but but uh, literally one comic comes out next week, and that's with the aforementioned dark web finale that we just talked about. That's coming yeah. out, right? So, uh, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, what are you picking up next week? Well, I got dark web finale one, Avengers sixty five, and Venom sixteen. That's which it. One? Which was the last one? Venom sixteen. Oh, Venom sixteen. Yeah, and that's it, eh? Uh, yeah, Avengers, and that's it. Nothing in DC. And like I think there's only like five com five or six comics being released by DC next week. Yeah, because I think it's like almost like a fifth week month for them because it's like February first when it comes out, and there's yeah. on the Tuesday, which is January thirty first. So it is a fifth week for DC, and that's why not much is coming out because yeah, you know, whenever it's like a fifth week for these guys, it's a smaller week normally. That's when you bring out your annuals. That's when you bring out like weird things, right? So yeah. Um, but what I what do I have is uh, where, where's my list here? Hold on. Yeah, so Avenger 65, like you said. Uh, sorry, I'm only picking up Dark Web Finale, like I said, number one, the uh, the physical release. And then I'm going to read digitally. I'm going to read Avenger 65, um, Venom 16 as well, because that actually comes before Dark Web Finale in terms of the checklist. Yeah. That as well, even though I really didn't like the last issue. Yeah. Um, I'm, it looks like I'm gonna catch up because Miles Morales Spider Man comes out next week, so I'm gonna I'm gonna Ooh. try out I'm gonna try out the first two issues and catch up on that and then read that as well because I'm very low on comics next week. Yeah, that's those first two are worth reading. I might have Miles because I bought one and two. Maybe they're gonna throw number three my way, right, but who knows? Right. Maybe we'll talk about that. And I'm also gonna again because I'm really low on books. I'm gonna try reading uh, issue two of Scarlet Witch next week as well because I read the first one that comes out next. Yeah, week. There, I'll probably give it a read too. Yeah, so there you go. So a very small week. That's five comics for me. Uh, and then there's a couple of like comics coming out. One from Image. I might try Blood Tree number one, and uh, one from Dark Horse called Where Monsters Lie number one. So again, this is me just trying to find things online to read because. <laughs> a very small week so you know which is fine too but if i get about six comics i'm happy with that so i might read like i said i might take a flyer on one of those other books one of those anyways but if it's gets to the point where it doesn't look like something that's going to interest me i'm not just going to read it to read it i'll just be like yeah oh, right so so yeah there you go guys so it's gonna be a smaller week next week uh you know uh uh, I know we went a little bit longer today with the news and the solicits and stuff but uh yeah we'll make up for it next week it's probably a shorter episode so yeah uh, always, you know, some, I'm looking forward to the wrap up of dark web though. It should be good. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So, all right, Chris, 
our favorite book of the week. What's it going to be this time for you? I don't know. I might. Uh... Let's see. Let's see. I don't know. You go ahead. I'm so, I mean, I'm, I'm deciding on one or two here. E. This is hard for me, but I'm going to give it to human target 11 because I, I really, when we talked about it, I, and like I said, I had kind of two trains of thought going into this after I had read it, but I think it's just been a wonderfully paced series. And this kind of was everything leading up to an interesting conclusion that I think this series should have been. Uh, so this kind of very much delivered. The art's been great on it the whole way through. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it to that. I, I, I again, I, I if I wasn't going to give it to that, I would give it as a close runner up to Amazing Spider Man. But I've been giving a lot of love to that book lately, and, and it was just again more of the same. And I did like it less than the last book, uh, the last issue, which was fucking even crazier than this one. So I'm going to give it to Human Target. I think it's got one issue to go. It's been a great series, so I, I'm going to give it to Human Target Eleven. My decisions are between Sins of Sinister and Exterminators, but I don't know if I've tied, I don't know if I've given Exterminators anything, but I'll give this my best comic. I thought it was a good series. And uh I you know, I want to see him come back. Not too soon, but I do want to see him come back. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to reading uh, reading the trade there. And I think I yeah, like I think it should be coming back soon enough because they literally just appeared in what was it, like an X-Men issue or something. Remember they were like in an issue of something where they showed up yeah. as I guess characters. So um, I'm glad it's, uh, you know, it's gotten a lot of interest from folks. Cause like I said, it's, it's nice to see those other characters, like the, some of the, you know, the other X-Men that don't get as much shine kind of, you know, stick out in this title. Right. And hopefully yeah. they keep the fucking artists. Cause the art is, is fucking great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Uh, we'll see you guys all next week. Thank you for tuning in make sure you're subscribed to the channel and check out some of our other shows. We actually just, uh, this past week, we just dropped a new episode of Crack and Packs with the chat, which has been on a hiatus the last couple of months, but it's a new episode of me and Christine opening up the new Pokemon card set, Crown Zenith. So if you're in a Pokemon or uh, in the cards or anything like that, those are always fun shows. Check that out. And uh, hopefully you'll have more of those to look forward to in the coming months as well. Um, I, I think they're going to be releasing some new, uh, new sets coming up that we're definitely going to be, uh, dipping our toe back into as long as we can afford it. So, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Right. Uh, that's, that's, that is definitely, you know, I, I talk about the costliness of, uh, of running that show, but like this one isn't cheap either. So <laughs> late night Send your money for a series, whatever upper deck next, uh, next season. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> end of, end of the like year. Two or three boxes there. Yeah, that'll be fun. So I'm sure you guys will see Chris on another episode of that as well in, in the future. And uh, that being said, though, if you ever want to see Chris on Crack and Packs with the chat, we got a whole playlist here on the channel of past episodes. Chris has been on quite a few times as well. So definitely check those out, guys. All right. That's going to do it for today. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Chris, thank you as always. Later, man. All right. Cheers.